how do you help guys find the right relationship? If they're, or sometimes guys don't even ask that, but do you ever just say like, listen, you got to figure out what kind of woman you're looking for. What's your process there? So, you know, the process there is to really first find a level of self-awareness, right? So it's important to understand the thoughts and potential limiting beliefs that someone has, right? So we all have these stories that we've told ourselves throughout our lives. Some are inherited from our upbringing. Some uh, we create from experiences we've had in our lives. And ultimately, they shape what we think is possible in relationship for ourselves, right? So it's first really important to understand, okay, where do you feel like your limitations are in relationship and how do we break through those? Because they're, they're made up, right? Our thoughts, we decide what our thoughts are every single day and we get to decide if we want to believe them or not. So in order to get clarity over what it is you really want, you have to first break through the noise of all the thoughts telling you that that's not possible, that that doesn't exist. You know, that that all women just want this type of guy and I'm this type of guy. And to be able to show up fully confident, authentically confident, not just putting on a show for the sake of a couple of dates, but truly knowing that in your worth and being able to say, I am deserving of having a partner who reciprocates my own stories about my worth, right? Because what happens a lot of the times is when we have stories that uh, make us feel bad about ourselves, then we're willing to accept behavior from other people that also makes us feel bad about ourselves. So there's so much more to understanding what you want in partnership just than like you're, you know, on paper around job, height, you know, physical attraction and um, level of drive or personality types or being able to be outgoing or anything like that. There is a deeper component there that is about what do you want to feel like when you're in this partnership, right? And that's something that a lot of men have trouble tapping into because it's really a feminine, more of like a feminine energy sort yeah, of I was gonna part say, yeah. is feeling, right? Getting into your heart space and going, ooh, okay, what does it feel like? to just sit next to this woman, right? Does it feel safe? Does it feel exciting? Does it feel fun? So that way, when that shows up in your life, you can go, oh, oh yeah, that's the feeling that I've identified, right? Because compatibility is so much more than check boxes. You've heard it probably a million times where they're like, I don't know, I just didn't feel that thing. And so it's so important to understand what that thing is and make sure that it's also a healthy thing because a lot of us are attracted to what we're familiar with and sometimes what we're familiar with is not healthy. Um, And so, you know, like I said, that's going back to understanding what are the limiting beliefs? What are those stories that you have inherited that you've told yourself time and time again to ultimately create the dating reality that you have now? What new thoughts do you need to adopt to start dating or to create a dating reality that's totally different? and way more expansive and way more fun. How do you feel about the idea of like arranged marriages and the fact that Mm. supposedly arranged marriages have a very low divorce rate and it comes from the idea of the opposite that you're saying. It's more they get matched up on compatibility Mm -hmm. in terms of, I, I mean, what I believe, I don't know too much about arranged marriages, but I know it's not about compatibility in the feeling. It's more of compatibility in the check boxes and... And what happens is once they're in an arranged marriage, they learn to love each other. So Mm -hmm. the feeling comes after. What are your thoughts on on that process of going, okay, this is the kind of woman I'm looking for. And then you find her. And if you don't immediately have that feeling going after it anyways, and then seeing if that feeling comes. Interesting. Um, I do believe love is a choice. You know, I think that you can have a high level of infatuation for someone and that's those butterflies, that fun feeling. And like I said, you want to make sure that you are healed from whatever stories maybe are creating an unhealthy attachment to that feeling in people that aren't right for you. But ultimately, at the end of the day, and and you know this because I think you're in a long-term relationship now, is is that, you know... There are days where you wake up and you make that choice to love someone and there are days where you wake up and you're like, yeah, this is, this is perfect. And it's about making that choice over and over and over again. And with arranged marriages, you know, you are ultimately committing to making that choice 
to love somebody. And I see this happen a lot in men where the pain doesn't necessarily come from um, not knowing something, not knowing if someone's right or not knowing um, what to do next, but just not committing to the next step, not committing to deciding which direction to go with that woman, whether it be I'm going to text her tonight or I'm going to actually get into a committed relationship with this person, right? When, when you're unable to trust yourself and trust your decisions, then you're never able to truly commit to any of them. And that's where the suffering comes in. That's where the second guessing comes in. That's where the low self-esteem comes in, you know, versus just saying, this is my reality. This is where I'm at. I'm choosing this person right now. Could something change that choice in the future? Absolutely, right? You don't want to just make a choice if, if it's not something that's fulfilling in your life. But with the arranged marriages, I think it takes out that storybook sort of desire that getting into a relationship is going to be really intense or really fiery or really passionate because sometimes those are the relationships that don't work out, whereas something that's more of a slow build that's that is able to develop over time will actually last longer and that's not you know to say that it never works out if you know depending on if it's a faster pace but it is more likely that something that goes faster can burn out faster it's just trends what isn't that weird Mm -hmm. i've been in that too you've been in that kind of thing where it's like yeah it's like hot and heavy for like a month and then it's Mm -hmm. like just dies Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think there is, you know, a level of commitment there where when people expect it to always feel that way, as soon as they see anything that makes them think otherwise of the person, you know, there's, I talk about attachment styles a lot when there's an insecure attacher involved in a situation, which is usually what the hot and heavy is, is like an anxious attacher and an avoidant. Um, you know, they feel that spark because they're ultimately triggering each other. Mm, um, yeah. yeah. And then it burns out because the avoidant usually finds little things about the anxious attacher and they're like, well, these are all the reasons why I shouldn't be with him or her and dip out pretty fast because those avoidant feelings, those triggers are really, really strong. And ultimately the avoidant has a pattern of, of leaving when they feel those feelings versus staying and being, and starting to get curious about them. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. 